from Caterpillars to Butterflies, episode 26, how your personal growth influences your spiritual growth and vice versa. Welcome to the From Caterpillars to Butterflies personal growth podcast. Just like the caterpillar is destined to become a butterfly, you too are designed for a beautiful transformation. This is where you go to grow and transform your life. And now, here's your host, Certified Life Coach, Charlene Dior. Hey, hey, this is Charlene, your host of the From Caterpillars to Butterflies Personal Growth Podcast. We talk about all things personal growth here, so if it can help you grow, we will likely be covering it on this podcast at some point or another. Thank you for listening. If you're a first-time listener, thank you for joining us. If you're a repeat listener, thank you for coming back. I've always said that personal growth is intertwined with spiritual growth. And the work that I do in personal growth also serves a broader purpose and benefit as it relates to spiritual growth. If someone's down in the dumps and lacking confidence and in a funk and just confused and unsure of themselves and unsure of life and dissatisfied, they're going to have a really hard time experiencing God and resting in his presence. It's going to be difficult for them because they have all these other things suppressing their spiritual awareness and presence. So as you grow personally, you can position yourself to grow spiritually as well and vice versa. As you grow personally, you can position yourself to take hold of the spiritual gifts and plans for you because you get to be open enough to experience God, to hear what he's telling you, to follow his lead and promptings once you get over the funk. (laughs) So I truly think that those two are super intertwined and your personal growth will help you take hold of and bring to life your spiritual gifts and your spiritual purpose. You know, people talk about what's my purpose. And I said this a while ago in another episode, you know, if you think that your purpose is some divine calling, then what you need to do is to talk to God, to get close with God. But if you're in a funk and you can't hear, then you have a hard time hearing. Or maybe you just have low confidence. You're just insecure. You feel unworthy. So maybe you, it's not that you're in a funk, but you just don't believe in yourself. Then you'll have a really hard time, right? So as you grow and develop as a person, then you get to grow and develop as a spiritual being as well. And vice versa, as you grow and develop spiritually, it in turn helps you as a personal being. The fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So as you grow spiritually, those same fruits will help you in your life, in your relationships, right? The same self-control that is a part of your spirit is the same self-control that you need to bring your goals and your visions to life. It's the same self-control that you need to keep your body healthy. I read this story online the other day about this woman who wrote a book about how she kept her marriage together by agreeing to being in an open marriage. And so after 20 years of being with this man, she finds out that he is unfaithful to her. And so instead of leaving, she stays because, you know, men are men, right? They can't control themselves. They just have to have multiple partners, but she doesn't have multiple partners. And I think that's the most craziest thing ever. Not, I mean, your decision on what you think about open relationships, but you're called to have self-control. I'd be embarrassed to say my man don't have no self-control. That's the fruit of the spirit. You're supposed to have it. Your spiritual growth helps your personal physical experience of life and relationships and initiatives. They are so intertwined. I was on a plane headed to San Diego. I went to Lisa Nichols Speak and Write to Make Millions conference. And so I'm on the tarmac in Houston, getting ready to take off. 
And in my head, I am singing one of my favorite Christian gospel songs right now, Oceans by Hillsong United. And I'm starting to get a little stirred up. I wouldn't say emotional, but just a little stirring inside my spirit. And the the lyrics are, you call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. So I've been on this journey and I've been to tons of conferences and tons of airplanes, constantly growing and learning and really walking out into the waters, the great unknown. And that made me feel something deep inside knowing that I keep going out doing the scary thing where my feet may fail, where I have no idea what is coming or what I'm doing. And I think a lot of times we're reluctant to follow the call out into the waters because we think that we're not ready, that we aren't good enough and we don't know enough and we're not capable and we're not skilled enough. And I would agree with you if that's what you think. You are not capable right now. You might not be skilled right now, but that's why we have to grow into our gifts. We have to grow into our spiritual gifts. Your personal growth will position you to take hold of your spiritual gifts If that's a marriage, if that's a career, if that's a vocation, a business, a ministry, your personal growth will position you to be ready. I've lived by myself for probably a decade. I'd like to get married one day and have a family, but single Charlene can't be married Charlene. Single Charlene isn't capable She's not disciplined enough. She's not flexible enough. She's not loving enough. Single Charlene is not ready to be married Charlene. And if single Charlene steps into married Charlene's house without knowing that she has to grow into that role, then her marriage is probably not going to last. We have to grow into our gifts. We are not ready. Corporate Charlene can be entrepreneurial Charlene. It's impossible. We have to grow into our gifts. We have to grow into our purposes. But a lot of times we're not going out into the water because we're focused on who we're not and what we don't have and what we're not capable of. But what we really need to be focused on, how do I grow? How do I grow to be capable enough? How do I grow to be confident enough? How do I grow to feel worthy enough? What I think is great about that song is that it says, there I find you. You find God in the midst of your calling, in the midst of your spiritual gifts. So not only does your personal growth help you take hold of your gifts, but taking hold of your gifts helps you grow spiritually, helps you find God, helps your faith increase because you can grow your confidence all you want and you should, but at some point it's not going to be good enough and your faith is going to have to take you the rest of the journey. One of the things that was mentioned many times at the conference was that your gifts aren't for you. Lisa Nichols said it, my good new friend, Kia Briscoe, she's writing a book on life planning and career planning, and she said it too, you know, your gifts are not for you. So when you go out into the great unknown, you aren't going there for yourself. But if you don't do it, then all the other people who needed you to do it, they don't get served. It reminds me of the parable of the talents in the Bible. Talents can be thought of as money, but I like using talents because it's 
impactful in this context. So the master is going out of town and he calls his three servants and gives them each talents. One servant he gives 10 talents to. Another servant he gives five talents to. The last servant he gives just one talent to. And the Bible says that he gives them talents according to their abilities. So the master goes out of town. And when he comes back, he calls his servants back and he wants to know what they did with their talents. The servant that was given 10 talents doubles his talents. He makes 20. The master says, good job. The servant that was given five talents also doubles his talents. He makes 10. The master says, good job. The last servant that was given one talent buries his talent. He was too afraid to use it. He was too afraid of what he might lose. He was too afraid of upsetting his master. So he did the safe thing with his talents and he buried it. Some of us are burying our talents because we don't want to lose something in the process because it feels safer because we're too afraid to walk out into the great unknown. So we bury our gifts. And when the master finds out that his servant did not multiply what he was given, that he buried it, the master was angry. The message translation says that the master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It's criminal to live cautiously like that, the master said. And then it goes on to say that the master said, take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most and get rid of this, play it safe, won't go out on a limb. Throw him out into utter darkness. That sounds depressing. If you don't use your talents, you get thrown out into darkness, despair, unhappiness. Does that sound like anything you've been going through? We're called to use our gifts, to share our gifts, acknowledging that they're not for us. But if we lack something in this physical manifestation of our spirit, if we lack knowledge, if we lack confidence, if we lack a skill set, it's really incumbent upon us to go get it because our gifts depend on it. Servants with the 1,000, he could have went and learned and studied with the other two servants to say, I am so scared. I don't know what I'm doing. The Bible said they were given according to their ability. So it's not surprising that he didn't feel as confident and capable. He didn't have the ability. That's what, that's why he was just given the one. But if he would have taken it upon himself to grow his ability to learn then he wouldn't have had to bury it. And if he would have used the first talent and multiplied it into two, then the next time his master wanted to give some talents to be leveraged, he maybe would have given him five. And then maybe from five, he would have got the 10. So if you can't use what you have because you don't have the skills or the confidence, then you can't use it what's above what you have either. You'll never get it. So we can't let our lack keep us back. We have to grow. We have to be willing to grow. And so how many people or how many times have you or I let go of something that would have been a gift, a blessing to us because we were unwilling to grow? Your personal growth will serve you well 
in your spiritual life. And your spiritual growth will also serve you well in your personal growth. And I think that we know that we're supposed to grow in some capacities. We know that we are supposed to grow our hard skills, our technical know-how, right? If you want to be an engineer, then you know that you have to go get a certain knowledge set, a certain skill set. You know you need a certain degree. And you know that you have to keep growing professionally because things always change. If you're a lawyer, you know the law always changes and you have to stay on top of it and constantly be growing and staying up to date. Some fields require that you take trainings to keep your certifications up to date. So we know that, we expect that, we adhere to that. We know that we're supposed to continuously grow spiritually. We're told to keep on the whole armor of God. We know that we have to pray and fellowship and read and go to church on a regular basis because we need to constantly be growing spiritually. We know that, we adhere to that. But we don't always know, we're never really taught that you need to grow personally as well. You need to grow your mindset, your habits, your belief systems, your confidence levels. You have to grow those as well too, continuously. And we're not always taught that. But I really wanted to take the time to share that as you grow personally, it positions you to grow spiritually. It positions you to attract and keep your spiritual gifts. And all three of these growth areas work together and they're advantageous to you. Your personal growth, your spiritual growth, and your technical growth, right? You have to focus on all of those areas. When you have confidence and technical ability and know-how and faith, then you can do anything. Years ago, I started investing in real estate, which you guys know this, and it was going really well and my family wanted to be involved. And so we all went and worked on a property together. And at first I was on my knees praying, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing me. Thank you for using me to build wealth and my family. It was an honor and a privilege to be called out into the water, the great unknown. And then like Peter, I got out into the water and I looked down and I was like, put me back in the boat. (laughs) Take this cup from me. I don't want it anymore. True story. And that's how we are. We don't want to share our gifts. We're too afraid. And when we do at the first roadblock, we want to give up. We want God to take this cup from us. And we're doubting and regretting our decisions. We're out of faith and we're out of self-confidence. So we have to continue to grow in those regards because when you go out and follow the calling, you might have faith to get there, but do you also have faith to stay there? You might have the confidence and the habits and the skill set to get there, but do you have enough to stay there? The answer is no, you don't, because you have to keep growing for the next iteration of your life and your purpose and your gifts, and we have to embrace it and expect it. And we can't just believe that one form of growth is all we need. I went to Tony Robbins' event in Dallas around this time last year. And I think there were like 9,000 people there. And I'm a black woman. I don't know if y'all know that. And so I'm looking for my sisters. 
Where my sister's at in the house. And I don't see a lot. And I'm like, what's up with that? Because I've been to that same convention center where Tony Robbins was multiple times with Megafest hosted by T.D. Jakes. And I love Megafest and I love Bishop T.D. Jakes and his family. And I've seen that same convention center packed with tens of thousands of people, mostly black women. So I know that we know how to pack a house when it comes to our spiritual growth. And we should. I'm not saying we shouldn't. We should. But you need personal growth and you need technical growth in order to fully grow into your gifts. You need some other stuff. And if we discount that, we don't own that, if we don't practice that, it will be difficult to grow fully, fully into our gifts. The Bible says faith without works is dead. But if you're too paralyzed by insecurities or guilt or the past or your mindset to work, then you're not going to bring about what you're having faith for. Or if you're too inconsistent, you're not disciplined enough, you don't have enough control to stay in motion working, you're going to have a hard time bringing about what you're believing for. You've got to be willing to grow in multiple facets. They all work together. They overlap. They influence each other. They support each other. When I say they, I'm talking about your personal growth, your spiritual growth, and your technical growth. They all go together. And when you combine them, you are truly unstoppable. So go be unstoppable. Go walk on water. Go multiply your talents. Go grow into everything that you were destined to be. Be intentional about it. Be be purposeful about it. Be mindful about it. That is my challenge to you. Establish a process, a ritual, a lifestyle where you're growing personally. You're growing your habits. You're growing your mindset. You're growing your self-confidence and feelings of self-worth. You're making peace with your past. You're finding balance. You're prioritizing. You're establishing your values, what you believe in continuously. And you're growing spiritually. You're spending time with God. You're studying. You're, you're worshiping. You're intentionally going to hear from him so that you can know when he's calling you and where he's calling you. And then that you're also growing your hard skills. You're growing your technical know-how in that whatever it is that you've been called to do, you're able, you're capable, you know what you're talking about. You have the skill set, which helps you have the confidence, which helps you go out on the water, which helps you know God more, which helps you get your next assignment, which helps you go back to study some more. It's a cycle. And when I'm talking about spiritual gifts, it's really not just vocational, right? It could be a relationship. Like I said, single Charlene just can't be married Charlene. So I got to grow. I got to grow in my mindset about what I am and ain't going to do and what I do and don't deserve, right? I have to grow in my communication skills. I'm pretty sure I do, right? My negotiation skills and my faith and my faith. So it's not just vocational. It's really any gift, any purpose set upon your life, any blessing waiting for you. You've got to be able to grow 
into it multi-dimensionally and keep growing never stop keep growing personally keep growing spiritually keep growing technically so that you can grow into the best version of yourself and really capture all the gifts that are for you and to multiply all of your talents and then start the cycle all over again because your talents aren't for you so someone else is watching you someone else is going to benefit from you so i hope that you take me up on that challenge and i hope that this was advantageous to you as always, I would love to hear from you. You can email me directly at charlene at from caterpillars to butterflies.com. Make sure that you are visiting the website and checking us out on social media, on Patreon, and come back next week. Until next time, grow on purpose. Personally, technically, and spiritually. Thanks for listening to the From Caterpillars to Butterflies podcast, your one-stop shop for all things personal growth. For today's show notes and even more tools and resources to help you transform the life you have into the life you love, go to www.fromcaterpillarstobutterflies.com.